Hello and welcome to a 7900 XTX part two, looking at iRacing. This time we're gonna do a more direct comparison between it and the 4080 Super from NVIDIA. Also, I'm doing a 13700K versus the 7900X3D. Is there a difference in which platform you use with each card? Turns out there is. So before we get there, first of all, big shout out to my new Patreons and uh, some super thanks that came in and names are on the screen here now. Um, this is awesome. This money is going straight into the piggy bank so that we can get some of this new hardware that's coming out this year that I am super stoked about. We're gonna get a new RDNA 4? Uh, GPU from Radeon, Ryzen is going to be announced probably next month. So this is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. And so in order to afford that, I need sponsorship. And right now I have none but you. So if you have a few dollars every month to send my way, I do appreciate it. It's going to go right into this new hardware that we can test. Speaking of testing hardware, in my previous video, I made a mistake. And so now moving forward, uh, I'm going to point up here. Uh, if I have made a mistake in this video you're watching right now, there will be a little bubble up here, a little dialog box saying, hey, look down at the description or click there and see another YouTube video for a follow-up. In my last video, listen, I got confused with the infamous uh, renderer DX11 INI files. If you're an iRacer, you are familiar with these. Um, you go in there, you can modify all of your uh, settings for iRacing, a lot of, uh, many of which are not within the graphics um, options and replay options in the GUI. So it's a great place to go in there and modify it. I recommend using Notepad++ to do so. Anyway, uh, I unintentionally put in a memory constraint. Uh, I forgot to increase the memory for these two cards. Therefore, they were tested at a lower gigabyte capacity. Turns out um, it doesn't really matter for the performance. And that's because iRacing is really good at managing VRAM, especially at around the eight gigabyte range, which is what I was testing. By unlocking more VRAM, it doesn't seem to yield more performance, at least in the triple 1440p that I did for just kind of validation check. Now, I know a lot of you are looking forward towards VR comparison between these two cards, and I do have a little bit of a preview for it. However, one of the things I've noticed with the 7900 XTX is a latency issue. If you're an old school iRacer and you remember the initial integration that iRacing put forward, there was a head movement lag that affected Valve Index users. Uh, HP uh, reverb users, people like that. And it just felt like drunk vision. It just felt that as you move your head, the headset was just a little bit slow. And for me, yes, it feels like that with the Radeon. I don't know why. I haven't gone into all the configurations yet to figure this out. Truth be told, I'm going to update to window, Windows 11 first, and then I'm going to dig into this. Here's, uh, you know, I'm cycling through here just what it looks like. Again, this camera is 60 FPS, recording 90 FPS in the headset, and it's being refreshed on the monitor at 144 re, uh, hertz. So... <laughs> It's interesting to see, but I don't think this is really substantial evidence. Maybe you can see a little bit of the latency. So anyway, when it comes to outright performance, with SPS enabled, GeForce smokes Radeon. It's not even close. And you know, here are some charts to show this. If you don't know what these charts are showing, I have done an introduction to VR benchmarking and there is a link right here. You can check out this video so you can understand these charts. Right now, I just don't recommend the best Radeon product for VR racing in, in iRacing. And if the best can't do it, then unfortunately um, I'm gonna throw the rest of the Radeons out with that. I will be doing more analysis, but if you're you know in the hunt right now and you're thinking about getting a 1700 XT for uh, VR, I just don't recommend doing that because the 7900 XTX gets smoked. So yeah, don't do that. Okay, now on to today's testing. What did I do? Well, we're gonna compare the two processors, the 13700K with the 7800X3D running both cards. I went through multiple resolutions and I did multiple tracks. And then I realized I made mistakes in my benchmarking process. I had to throw all the data out. It was like a week of benchmarking, all gone, and I had to go back and redo it. It's fine, I'm over it. 
So I've only benchmarked one track. It's Zandvoort. It is the most demanding benchmark that I have. It is a whole bunch of IMSA cars. It is complex to render. It's very interesting. And so we'll go over those results now. So we're looking at the average frames per second in the light blue and the 1% lows in the dark blue. My data set is a bit more complicated, so I've stuck the parameters on the right-hand side. This includes SMP, which is an NVIDIA-specific technology to improve uh, triple screen rendering, and projections, one being a single projection, three being uh, each monitor projected accurately within the simulator. If you don't know what I mean by all that, uh, go back and look at part one of the 7900 XTX and iRacing analysis I've done. We're looking at dual 4K resolution and we're seeing both video cards on both processors. The first takeaway is that the 4080 Super is faster. And secondly, it's a bit strange to see that the 7900 XTX performs worse on the AMD processor compared to Intel, and it's the opposite for the GeForce card. When we look back over at the parameters, some of you may have noticed I have disabled Rebar and SAM in this analysis, and I think that's worth explaining right now. Resizable Base Address Register, or Rebar, was developed last generation, so RTX 30 series, 10th and 11th gen Intel, and it allows the CPU to store more data in bigger chunks within a graphics card's VRAM. As I understand it, NVIDIA has to make it enabled in the game or simulator. And it actually might work better with video cards with less than 16 gigabytes and not more. The Radeon equivalent is included in the AMD Smart Stack, um, which is a whole bunch of features that AMD has to try and improve performance on its cards and CPUs. While Nvidia's rebar can work with both Intel and AMD CPUs, the SAM Smart Access Memory from AMD only works with a Radeon graphics card and a Ryzen CPU. And even there, there are some models that it won't work on. Going back to our dual 4K benchmark, when I enable SAM and rebar on these processors, here are the performance gains. The biggest jump is with the 7900 XTX on the 7800 X3D, showing an over 9% gain compared to uh, SAM being disabled. In contrast, the 4080 Super doesn't show much of a gain, maybe gaining just a couple percent on the 13700K with rebar enabled. So let's look at triple screens, and this time I'm gonna run one projection, so really it's being treated as one giant resolution, and that's why the performance numbers are very similar to dual 4K. With Rebar and SAM disabled, the 7800X3D has an advantage over the 13700K with both cards, and again, the 4080 Super is leading the 7900XTX. When I enable SAM, we see again the 7900XTX really like that with the 7800X3D. Its advantage over the 13700K increases from 2 to 6%. Meanwhile, the 4080 Super's performance seems to diminish slightly. I think that's just more of the variability of iRacing performance from run to run and from basically restarting the simulator and, and loading it up again. It, that's just part of the margin of error. Regardless, the gap has shrunk between these two graphics cards. SAM benefits the 7900 XTX and it claws back to within a few percent of the 4080 Super. Sticking with triple 1440p, but now enabling three projections with SAM and rebar disabled, here are the results. Once again, the 4080 Super outperforms the 7900 XTX, but notice how its performance with the 7800X3D really stands out. With 77.8 frames per second, it has a 15% advantage over the 7900 XTX on the same processor. But if we use both graphics cards with the 13700K, the gap is only like, what, 7%? So there's a big advantage here for the 4080 Super with that X3D cached chip. And when I enable Rebar and SAM, look at this. The 4080 Super actually loses a frame, so maybe that's a margin of error, but all the other ones seem to gain. 
we're only talking about a few performance points here, so I wouldn't draw many conclusions from this. Other than Sam helps the 7900 XTX close the gap to the 4080 Super. When I push the resolution to triple 4K, the highest I can go, using iFinity and NVIDIA Surround, these are the results. There is a clear advantage, again, to the 4080 Super, but the gaps between the processors are much smaller in frame rate, but percentage, they're fairly similar to what we've been looking at. Note that I did this testing with three projections. And when I enable Rebar and SAM on each platform, check this out the gap significantly decreases. This is a big advantage to the 7900 XTX. Its performance on the 7800 X3D jumps by 16.1%, and it also increases on the 13700K by 7%. Within this benchmark scenario and during the runs I completed, the 4080 Super at triple 4K seems indifferent to if Rebar or SAM is enabled. Radeon's marketing material seems to suggest that it's a more advanced form of rebar, that it doesn't require game-specific driver updates and optimizations, and these results seem to suggest so, and I'll have to test additional simulators to really find that out. Another thing I was trying to play around with was an update to PresentMon. Uh, if you're a Gamers Nexus fan, you're probably familiar with this video. It's pretty a technical deep dive into... Um, Another tool that's used, the backbone that I use for CapFrameX and other analysis tools that are out there. And they've added in CPU weight and CPU busy. Now, I haven't showed any GPU busy and, and stuff like that deliberately because I wanted to make a whole different video about this technology and, and what the results look like. Unfortunately, it's not that great. Um, I can't find much use out of it. So here are some examples. This is Zanvort at triple 4K on the 7800X3D. And I'm not gonna go over these numbers. This is just my attempt of trying to understand the data. But there is one significant thing to look at. The CPU weight for Radeon is always higher than GeForce. And not by a little, from two to four times as long in time. And these other examples are comparing SPS uh, with uh, GeForce on the 13700K. I do not know if this is just a measuring artifact or if this is accurate to the adrenaline drivers. Maybe this does capture an inefficiency uh, with, with Radeon and iRacing. I'm, I'm not sure. Because even when Radeon outperforms GeForce at a certain resolution, this CPU wait time is still much higher. Speaking of SMP, I also want to remind everybody that even though there is an advantage for the 7800X3D using SAM and a 7900XTX, that is just not enough to overcome the shortcoming Radeon has with multiple projections and running accurate um, viewports for that. And so here in this example, we're at triple 4K and clearly you can see that advantage with the 4080 Super. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the last video. So that concludes today's video. I will be updating my platforms to Windows 11 and doing more VR analysis, especially with the Radeon product. I'm not gonna try and figure out this latency issue on Windows 10. It just seems like a waste of time. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've launched a website. So maybe you're looking for specific advice personal to you, you're upgrading or buying a whole new system and you're just not sure what specifically to buy. You can uh, submit a request to me and yeah, we'll work together and figure it out. You can also submit super thanks and super likes to support this channel or uh, so, uh, sign up to my Patreon. And I'm collecting all of those funds so that I can buy the new hardware as it comes out this year. So thanks for watching.